about two powerful platforms collected our crack product marketing team. They first ventured south, discovering OS 10 Oxnard, OS 10 Weed. We discovered OS 10 Yosemite. We started with the most fundamental controls. You'll see how the use of translucent materials gives you a sense of place as you scroll your content and check out these beautifully crafted new icons. We also focused on precise and consistent typography throughout. All in all, a gorgeous and more usable version of OS 10. Next, let's talk about Notification Center. So you get an at-a-glance look at your calendar, your reminders, weather, and more. You can extend the contents of Today View with the contents of widgets and apps that you've downloaded from the App Store. Next up, Spotlight. You get a big field right in the middle of the display. And if you just type a few characters, you can launch an app just like that. We also tap into sources of information on the internet. Type a few characters in like Yosemite, you can get newsfeed, information from Wikipedia, and even maps. So next, iCloud Drive. Your Mac, in addition to let you work on those within the document, has all of those folders right accessible inside of Finder. And in addition to those apps that are local to your Mac, you can get a content from iOS documents. Next up, mail. Instead of your message bouncing off your recipient's mail server, you can elect to have the attachment sent encrypted and securely via iCloud separate from the message and it rendezvous on the receiving end. And those attachments can be up to five gigs in size. So next, markup. Have you ever been working on an email message and you realize that if you could just maybe circle something or write something on the message, maybe doodle a little something, you could get your point across so much more clearly? Well, now with markup, you can. Next up, Safari. We've, in Yosemite, been able to pack all the power of the Safari UI into this single bar. Now, your smart search field, when you click it, shows you all of your favorites right there. You also get spotlight suggestions right there in your completion menu. And this means you can get at things faster than ever before. We now have a tab view that gives you a bird's eye glance of all of your tabs. Something entirely different. It's called continuity. We believe you should be able to use the right device for the moment. Maybe your phone, your iPad, or maybe your Mac. Now AirDrop works between iOS and the Mac. But now we have something where we really take it to the next level and it's called handoff. Your devices around you are aware of each other. And so if you wanna pick up where you left off on your Mac, on your iPad, your iPad is prompting you right in the lower left of the screen. Just swipe up and you can pick up working on what you're working on your Mac right on your iPad. This works in the other direction as well. The next area we really wanted to handle was SMS. We all love iMessage. We can continue our conversation seamlessly from device to device. But then we have these green bubble friends. They have inferior devices and they insist on sending us messages and we don't want to hold it against them. But the problem is that those messages don't show up on our other devices. Now your phone is able to act as a relay to automatically and transparently send your messages between devices. We're able to do the same thing with phone calls. Hey, how you doing, this is Dre. Uh, hey, hey, uh, doctor, you're, you're on speakerphone with, via my Mac. It's a wonderful new release, Yosemite, and it's available to you developers here today. Everyone else will get it in the fall. It will be free. Today, we're announcing iOS 8. What I really love are our new interactive notifications. If you get a message like this, just pull down and you can reply from right where you are. So if you get a calendar event, for instance, just pull down and respond. You can also use that same double tap to get at the people you communicate with most frequently. If you're reading a message and you want to remember to get back to it, so you're going to mark it unread, we can do that with just a single gesture. If you want to flag a message, you can just pull across, there's a flag option, but if you pull all the way across, you can delete with just a gesture. You ever found yourself composing an email and then you really wish like you could get at something else in your inbox, maybe for that reply? Just swipe that message down and you have access to the rest of your mail. You can search for apps and find matches of apps that you don't yet have on the App Store. You can search for points of interest and get Wikipedia entries and directions. You can search for news, search for restaurants, songs, not just in your own library, but also on iTunes. Next, technology we call 
quick type. It's context sensitive. For instance, in messages, if someone asks you, do you want to go for dinner or a movie? It's going to suggest dinner or a movie. It learns how you type to different people in different apps. Next up, messages. So when it comes to group messaging, you can now name your threads. You can add or remove people from a conversation underway. You can do not disturb on a per thread level and you can choose when to leave the thread. You also can share your location and you also have a really great at a glance view of all of the pictures and attachments. Tap to talk. You just hold your finger down on the microphone button, swipe up with your finger when you're done talking and send what you said. Right, I've got to do something. I've got it. Craig, it's good to hear that you survived the great hair crisis of 2014. Next up, iCloud Drive. You can bring up your iCloud Drive panel and open documents directly from other applications. Now, something that we all care a lot about, health. And with health, you can monitor all of your metrics that you're most interested in your activity. Next up, family sharing. You automatically get to share photos with a shared photo stream to share calendars with your family, to share a fair, shared reminder list. You can get it not just your purchases, but the purchases of all the members of your family. And it works great for kids as well. Because when they do make a purchase, they get prompted to ask you for permission. We're bringing together photos with iCloud so that every photo you, ta you take are available to you on all of your devices. Your device actually has access to more photos in the cloud than it can physically store locally. But we also give you search. And so that search lets you match on things like location, time, and also albums that you've set up. We also help you perfect your photos with great new smart editing controls. You get all your photos in your organization across your iOS devices, and soon with your Mac and via the web, Windows as well. If you take your phone and you plug it in, for instance, in the car, you can say, hey Siri, and start talking to Siri without having to even touch your phone. We're rolling out a number of new features on the store. We're adding an Explore tab. We're adding top trending searches to make search even better. We're giving the developers the capability to form app bundles. We're introducing app previews. We're also introducing for the first time today a new beta test service called Test Flight. This release is the biggest release since the launch of the App Store. With extensibility, applications from the App Store will be able to extend the system and offer services to other apps. In addition to the system's built-in sharing options, an app like Pinterest can offer a share sheet to Safari. Now we're also supporting photo filters inside of photos. Finally, we're enabling third-party apps to define widgets that can now go in Notification Center. So I can tap the plus next to Sports Center, position it where I want among my widgets in my Today View, tap Done, and now I have information on my favorite sports teams right here inside of Notification Center. Now, third-party apps can take advantage of Touch ID as well. We started working with the leaders in home automation devices, and we've come up with a home kit with a common network protocol that has secure pairing to ensure that only your iPhone can open your garage door or unlock your door. With HomeKit, you can group devices and changes into scenes, and then with Siri integration, you can say something like, get ready for bed, and be assured that your garage door is closed, your door is locked, the thermostat is lowered, and your lights are dimmed. We have a new programming language. The language is called Swift, and it totally rules. Swift is fast, it is modern, it is designed for safety, and it enables a level of interactivity and development that you've never seen on the platform. With features like closures, generics, type inference, multiple re return types, and namespaces. You know how many people at home are going, what in the heck are these guys talking about? That's iOS 8. It's gonna be available to those of you here in beta today. And you guessed it, available to everyone else in the fall, and it'll run on all of these devices. An incredible set of features, an incredible release. Thank you very much.